record. Awesome. So hello, everyone. My name is Sarah McAnulty. I run Skype a Scientist. And today we are joined by Seiyu Chen, who will be talking to us about uh, insects and the diseases that we sometimes end up getting from them. Um, hopefully not all not all insects are uh, going to give us diseases, but some of them do. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. And uh, I guess I'll share screen for Sunday. Great. Yeah. So everybody at home, if you have questions, um, submit them to the Q&A and we will go through them um, as, as we go. All right. So hi, everyone. I'm Seiyu Chen and uh, I'm currently a postdoc in Yale University study about infection disease. So it's, this is what I'm doing. And uh, my background is from entomology, so I'm very interested in those insects and uh, especially the disease like carry. So in this figure, I they show you a lot of it, bugs. So, for example, ticks, and we all know they transmit Lyme disease, and kissing bugs, Chagas disease, and some Aedes mosquito viruses. And uh, chatter fly, they will transmit some sleep, sleeping sickness. And uh, we all know like African, like anopheles mosquito transmit malaria and same fly. So basically those insects, they carry disease because they take the blood. So those either parasite or virus, they take the advantage and uh, get in through the vector, the insect and the earth while they are taking blood as their cycle. So I just very quickly say what I'm doing now and feel free to ask me any other question. So I'm working on Aedes aegypti, which is uh, one major vector around the world, especially on virus. So they can transmit like dengue virus, Zika virus, uh, chikungunya, yellow fever, those virus are all majorly carried from them. And uh, as you can see on the down, the world map is a prediction of the Aedes aegypti mosquito habitat. You can see based on the year, they start to expand because also the global warming and everything. So they are more close to us and uh, Unfortunately, we expect the disease will be more severe after several years. So that's what we are working at. So my major working on is first is insecticide resistance. So I don't know if anyone has seen the local mosquito control. They have spread the insecticide around your neighborhood and tried to kill the mosquito. However, I mean, a lot of them start to have resistance to those drugs. So what we are doing is to research why they have resistance to the insecticide and how we can conquer that issue. And the other one is I try to understand the vector, which is mosquito, the immunity and the interaction with viruses. So, for example, if we can understand how the mosquito, their immunity, how they fight with the virus. So maybe we can stop the transmission cycle, as you can see on the right bottom in the 80s mosquito part. So even the mosquito bite us, they might not be able to transmit virus to us because they can get rid of the virus by themselves. So that's basically what I'm doing. and. Uh, I'll stop sharing. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So um, as the climate changes a bit, these mosquitoes are going to different areas like you showed in that map with the red and the blue. Um, but it also looks like there are places that the like as the red goes, like let's say in Africa, it goes a little bit mm -hmm. south. But there's also like blue that grows up in the northern area. So does it get like too hot for mosquitoes in some places? Yeah, so now, depending on the species, they all, all have their preference. And uh, of course, if it's too hard, they they tend not to be survive well. I mean, they will still be there, 
but uh, its impact is transmission ability for sure. But uh, what we are worried is the north area, like uh, they become cold, hot, warmer and warmer, which is perfect for the Aedes mosquito to immigrate there. And uh, that's a major issue we are dealing now. They might spread the disease more in the urban area. Right. Yeah. All right, we've got a question from Scott from fifth grade um, in Washington. What is the oldest bug that you're aware of that you've ever found? The oldest bug, what's that? I mean, age-wise or like a historical? I think age-wise, not evolutionary history, yeah. I think uh, it's also depend because not just saying insects are very interesting. You might think they not survive for long, However, some mosquito, I, I make mosquitoes as an example, they do diapause. So in the winter, they sleep. And uh, while the winter is past, then they emerge again. Uh, they start to activity again. And also, for example, like uh, uh, the Aedes mosquito I just mentioned, when they lay their eggs, they can be staying in the egg for years. Okay until the water comes through and then they huh. become their larvae. So that's also the thing we are trying to tell everyone. If you have those water container in your backyard, dump it. Otherwise, mosquito will lay eggs on it. Yeah. I definitely have uh, water in my backyard that I shouldn't probably have in Philadelphia. Um, cool. So uh, Christian, also from fifth grade, wants to know, what's the most dangerous bug? Mm -hmm. I would say mosquito for sure, because if you ever seen those like uh, statistic uh, calculation, mosquito is the, the species kill most of human being every year. Not, not because, they trans, because they transmit so many things, like uh, I just mentioned, all the viruses and uh, malaria, that's still a very huge problem in Africa and uh, some Southeast Asia. And uh, yeah, so that's still a big issue we are daring about. For sure. All right, we've got uh, the BITS class. Aja wants to know, um, of the diseases that you find in mosquitoes, that mos mosquitoes can transmit to humans, which of those diseases is the most deadly or the most dangerous? Mm -hmm. That's also, uh, that's actually a tricky question. So it's all depend on your immune system and uh, oh. for each person. If I don't know if everyone remember like uh, four or five years ago when the Zika virus outbreak and that's actually caused a lot of problems, especially for the babies in the still uh, infant. They make the babies like a brain cannot develop totally. And that's actually very deadly. But somehow, uh, people might get the uh, immunity. Like uh, next time, if you get the same virus, you might conquer that easily. So, however, I think there's, I would not say virus will totally kill you, but uh, if your immunity is relatively weak, it's still very, might be dangerous, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, we got another one from the BITS class um, from Henry. How do allergies affect you more or less based on a mosquito bite? Like some people get so itchy and some people only get a little itchy. Like what is that about? So when mosquito bite us, they want to take out blood, right? But uh, as we all know, if we got wounded, the blood will start to be clucked uh, from time to time. So when mosquito take the blood, of course they don't want our blood to be clucked in their mouth or their... So they will secrete some their saliva into our body. And those are actually helping our blood not getting clucked so they can take our blood easily. So if you feel super itchy and those actually is from your own body, recognize there's something from outside. So we have to against that. So I would say if you feel super itchy, that also means you have a very good immune. 
cool. I am one of those people that gets incredibly itchy. So my immune system must be really active against those, those uh, mosquitoes. Um, all right, we got the Delaware Museum of Nature and Science. Uh, sure, can you, well, they can hear. Just give us a second here. These are great questions we have here. Let me speak again. I, okay, can you hear me? Yes. No. Great, great, great. Okay, uh, so this is coming from the Delaware Museum of Nature and Science. Can you tell us more about wheel bugs? Are they dangerous? Sorry, which bugs? Wheel bugs. They're a type of assassin bug, I believe. They live Delaware, Pennsylvania. I can tell you a little bit about them, but I don't know a ton about them. <laughs> I probably not really know about that bug. Yeah, the thing about insects is that there are so many of them that you can't be an expert on all of them. So if someone's an expert on mosquitoes, they might not know as much. Like I'm an expert on squid, but I don't know a lot about octopuses, for example. Uh, but wheel bugs, long story short, they're gray. Um, and they, they're, it looks like they have like a little cog on their back almost, like a little circle with little spikes on it. And they have like a, a needle for a face. So they like puncture the animal that they're trying to attack. They inject oh, stuff okay. that I liquefies them, the like insides, and mm -hmm. they suck up the, the liquefied insides like through a straw. Um, so gross, so fun. And if you get like stung by one, it does hurt, uh, but it won't kill you or anything unless you're like, I guess, allergic to wheel bugs maybe. But uh, dangerous insofar as I wouldn't pick one up, not so dangerous that uh, you should be afraid for your life. Um, yeah, those are predators. So they actually find other insects and, uh, like you say, take out their liquid or fluff from other insects for their nutrient. So actually, if you come beside, they might hurt you. They actually beneficial for agriculture because they will target those like uh, insect which might eat our plant. Right. Totally. Yeah. So. Not great if you pick one up, but overall good for us. That's yeah. good. All right, we've got a question uh, from people from Los Angeles are facing the 80s Egypti mosquito. They seem to be smaller, faster, and more agile than mosquitoes that used to be around Los Angeles. They seem to be out more during the day, unlike the prior one, which often bit at dusk and dawn. Are there interventions or inventions slash technologies out there that attract mosquitoes and kill versus uh, the old technologies of repelling it? How do we, how do we get them to go away? <laughs> Actually, California, we did have some like a research on it. So they didn't have ADIS and somehow the ADIS show up and they totally disappear. And recently they show up again from different places. I mean, because now the travel, everything is so easy to carry those like uh, insects around. And I would say, I think. I mean, I know some people in the uh, uh, skill control so in California, they, they work hard um, try to decrease the population. But uh, like I say, yeah. most of mosquito now, they start to resist to the infested side. I would say, try to start from ourselves, get rid of those water container and so they will not lay egg. So it's actually very beneficial to decrease their number. And uh, in the scientist part, there's actually a lot of interesting people are working on it. If so, for example, there was a, a bacteria, not bacteria, a symbiote called Wabakia. So it's a research from a group from Australia and uh, they find out if we infected those Wabakia in the mosquito, it's actually decreased the virus in the mosquito. So now they actually started the research. So they spread, release those mosquito in certain area and try to see what's the outcome. And in the meantime, I think in Florida, the mosquito control, they start to release the, uh, what's that called, uh, sterile male. So right. they use UV to make the male cannot produce proper sperm anymore and they release it, try to decrease the number. So scientists are working on that and local mosquitoes are working on that. And uh, we all need everyone's help to 
all your environment. Sounds good. All right. Next question is from uh, the Roth classroom. This is from Zoe in fifth grade. Uh, why did you want to become an entomologist? <laughs> That's a great question. So I like I like insects when I was a kid. I think when I was young, my parents, I mean, I'm from Taiwan, which is a tiny island, and uh, we have very diversity of insects specifically. So my parents bring me to the wild, and I'm sorry, but who doesn't like those cute insects? So I like them, and I decide to study them. But uh, I decide to study the disease carrier later because you have to pick something you are interested about. And I think that's very interesting. And also it's beneficial for us, for yeah, human beings. Yeah. So I think doing entomology is a good choice. I encourage everyone to do it. And uh, actually we have a lot of area you can study. I'm working on the disease. You, If you are interesting, we, I have a lot of friends also go out to collect and try to identify new insects. And uh, some people are working on the agriculture to try to help our product, uh, crop production. So there's so, many, so much fun in this area. Lots to be done. Awesome, thanks. The next question is from Hamza. Uh, how long can a tick stay on you? Oh, it's actually, they will stay on you for days. Ooh. So uh, so my current now, now they are working on ticks also. So ticks is not like mosquito. Mosquito get on you bite you probably in a minute, less than a minute and they are gone. You didn't notice at all, but ticks, they tend to stay down you and uh, bite you and they, they need time. So they will stay you at least hours, two days, they just there and slowly to take it. So I think it's easier for you to identify they are biting you and get rid of them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, and ticks carry all kinds of nasty stuff. So, huh. um, Milo has a question. Uh, can mosquitoes suck each other's blood? No, but uh, actually they cannot suck each other's blood. But uh, the funny thing is not all the mosquito is a uh, blood feeder. Uh, let's just say gender, female mosquito, they, they take blood from us, but the male, they don't because the female need the, our blood as a nutrient to produce their eggs. But the male don't need to produce it. They only need to take a water or sugar. And uh, there's some mosquito, they don't take blood. They are actually eat other mosquitoes. So in the larvae stage in the water, they actually hunt other larvae and eat them as a nutrient. So that's also one thing we are working on it to see if they can be a natural predator to decrease the mosquito population. Awesome, very cool. Um, our next question is from Garden Spot Secondary Campus. How effective is bug spray or citronella candles at preventing mosquito bites? Uh, can you repeat the question again? Um, how effective is are, are citronella candles or bug spray like DEET, for example, at mm -hmm. preventing mosquito bites? I would say, uh, it's still, the, uh, I think it's very, I think most of them still work, but uh, depend on the solar tree shipping is we did have some research working on it. Most of them work as a repellent and uh, we still have some project working on the repellent because the mosquito will hate it, but no matter how the repellent is good or not, you always can see some mosquito go that way because you know they need to survive and they need to produce their eggs so the eagerness might conquer the fearness let's say like that yeah yeah so if like there's somebody not wearing a bug spray next to you they might get bitten more just like you know when you're going in the fridge and it's been a while since you've uh gone grocery shopping there's food there you, you don't want to eat it but like you know when it all comes down to it you're going to probably eat it anyway right Cool. All right. So uh, the next question um, is from Eurizen. What is the most common type of mosquito in America? Mm, I think it must in America majorly will be Culex. So that's actually more than 80. So Culex is not all of them, but most of them, they transmit with Nile virus. 
and uh, that's a bird disease and also us. So they, so Kulik is a bird feeder. So mm. every mosquito, they actually, they have their preference. Not everyone like to bite us. They have their own target they like to eat, but uh, if there's no choice, they will bite everything. Mm -hmm. so, so I think the mosquito in America majorly is Culex. There's a lot. So they uh, tend to be a little bit bigger and they are more yellowish. I believe everyone's seen that before. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Um, Delaware Museum of Science, or Nature and Science, would like to know what is your favorite part of your job? <laughs> my favorite part of my job is try to understand the unknown. So I'm more working on the cell, le cell level about how the virus and uh, the mosquito are intact. For example, I'm working on once the mosquito take the blood and virus what they react, what's happened to them, which, which thing will be triggered, which thing will activate, which one. So it's all the interaction and uh, I think it's so fun. So to see the unknown interaction between the virus and the mosquito, which we totally, we only know a little bit. And uh, that's the most fun thing for me, to discover the unknown. Awesome. Sounds good. Brian Long would like to know, are mosquitoes able to transmit, transmit the HIV virus and why or why not? No. So the, if the mosquito need to be a sufficient vector, they have to be able to infect the mosquito and the virus has to be able to replicate in the mosquito. So Mosquito has their gut, so like take like us, they take the blood in, they will get to in our like stomach and gut. So the virus first has to infect the gut cell and they start to replicate and go out and then go back to their saliva. And next time when they bite people, the virus will go in. So HIV apparently they cannot infect the mosquito. They will get into the mosquito, but uh, they will just die and. Uh, or killed by mosquito. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, mosquitoes. And on that front, anyway. Uh, next question is from Hudson from fifth grade. What is your favorite bug and why? <laughs> My favorite bug actually is not mosquito. My favorite bug is uh, dragonfly and denso fly. Ooh, they're really pretty. Yeah, they are amazing. And uh, they have so many colors beside the wings and the uh, and they have different color between uh, summer and winter and uh, male and female. So it will be slightly different. And um, I think when they pray, they are a predator. So, you know, they, they hunt small bugs. I mean, I saw those like a slow motion video. For me, it's very cool. <laughs> yeah, they're super cool. It's unbelievable how fast they are. Uh, they can, I think one of them can go like 60 miles an hour or something. It's unbelievable, so quick. Um, all right. Uh, Moes wants to know if there are any bugs that have something in them to help us cure diseases. Mm. If it's only a fact on us, I would not say it's, no, I don't think there's any so far. If you are saying directly apply to us, but uh, I mean, if you are saying we try to produce those predator and uh, decrease those like uh, pests or other thing, then yes, those are insects can actually beneficial for human, yes. Yeah, there's some research happening um, that's not quite cure diseases as you may think about it. But like, for example, there are a lot of um, bacterial symbioses with, so like partnerships with uh, insects. And sometimes the, the like either fungus or the bacteria or whatever that live on the insects or inside the insects may produce useful stuff that um, maybe it's antibiotics, maybe it's an antifungal, maybe it's like these things that could be useful for human health. But, it, but um, so you never know what we could discover from them too. So there might be like some compound chemical, something like that, that is being produced by an insect or the things that live on and in insects that we could then develop into drugs. But um, who knows? Yeah, it's complicated. Very complicated. Okay, uh, but we're we're not applying insects directly to cure diseases unless you count leeches, but they're not insects. So, yeah. 
the yeah anyway anyway uh the next question comes from sarah not me a different sarah asks what would happen if there were no mosquitoes on earth actually i got that question a lot a lot of people just ask me why you don't just kill all the mosquito mm -hmm. but uh, if you consider in a bigger picture mosquito is also very important in our environment uh, a lot of other insects or birds or like laser they are their major food so if we totally remove a species out the whole ecosystem might crash and uh, we don't want to see that so that's the reason why we want to keep mosquitoes still there but we want to get rid of the virus yeah. for sure cool um so okay we talked about malaria um uh, what other types of diseases can be transmitted by bugs? Maybe like outside of the mosquitoes. This is from Ethan in grade five. Yeah, like uh, we talk uh, ticks. Ticks can transmit Lyme disease and some like uh, viruses. And um, the kissing bug, they can transmit Chagas disease. And uh, if you remember the photo on the button, like uh, in the North Africa, they have those tits of fry. Mm, yeah. They can cause you the sleepless sickness. So there's actually a lot, but uh, most of them are like uh, more regionally. They haven't spread all around the world. So, but believe me, there's a lot of people working on it as well. Yeah. Yeah. CC flies are also really cool because they do uh, live birth. I was actually at a talk from a scientist from Yale back when I was a University of Connecticut student, and the females will give birth to like babies, but the babies are so big compared to the moms that it's like one of the wilder things like if, if you at home are um at, at home at school are not grossed out by like weird bug stuff um look up at cc fly giving birth it'll ruin your day or making it make it better it's hard to say which but it is uh, it's wild uh, really wild um so so there's that that's why that's another reason cc flies are cool um all right next question is from lily in grade five how long have you been a bug entomologist uh oh how long I have been? All right, things. So around 17, 18 years. So I started my undergrad from entomology major and uh, came to American through my PhD, also entomology. So all my life is entomologist. <laughs> Awesome. Um, our next question is from uh, Nashmia. Uh, how do you study the mosquitoes without getting the diseases from them? Uh, that's actually, we have very strict rule on like uh, doing research on the mosquito, especially if they have a disease carry. So we have to be super careful and not only super careful, and we have strict rule. Once you got infected, you have to be separated in like a independent container and uh, you will not be allowed to do something to cause you got bitten or release otherwise you know it will be a big problem we have to clean all the facility how do you feed them so there's several ways if we are going to infect them we have lots like artificial feeder we just mix blood and virus to feed them that's one way and or we can infect them the uh, experimental mouse with virus and uh, we just feed them with mouse so either way depend on the experimental design wow i know so i i used to work um in a symbiosis lab and across the hall was a leech lab and mm -hmm. the leech lab would take so in the lab um you have these things called uh falcon tubes or or mm -hmm. conical tubes you know this obviously but the folks at home might not know this and they're like they're like maybe like this big um, and there's this stuff that a lot of scientists use called parafilm. It's like mm -hmm. stretchy, rubbery kind of stuff that you can stretch over stuff and then it clings really good. It's like it's like a more waxy cling wrap and it's really useful for all kinds of science stuff. Um, so they would pour sheep's blood into these conical tubes, these like, yeah, just tubes, and then wrap the parafilm over top and then hand them to the leeches. And the leeches would like bite the parafilm because they wanted to like, I think the leeches like to like, like bite into something. And the parafilm was like the right consistency. And so they would drink the sheep's blood through the parafilm. Gross, fun. Uh, sometimes we actually use the... Not only parental, we, if you are doing artificial one, we use the sausage cast. Really? 
Yes. Yes. So it's That's more awesome. simply the mosquito like it more. They like the sausage casings. Hmm. Okay, why not? Um, all right, let's see. Um, is it easy to catch adult mosquitoes? Like when you're doing these uh, studies, where are the mosquitoes coming from? So we do have a lab colony. So we just rear it in our lab. Or if we need a wild mosquito, we can just go out and collect it and uh, bring them back to the lab. So it's actually easy. They are very adapted. So you just throw the egg in the water, they will become larvae, you just feed them, and then when they become the gold, you put in a cage, that's it. So when you're going and collecting them in the wild, are you collecting eggs from the water or are you collecting them from the yes. air? It's okay. probably easier to produce, uh, just collect egg in the water. So normally we have those like uh, cups and uh, we just randomly put around the area and uh, after a week, you can see the eggs. Nice, sounds good. All right, our next question is from Salem. Uh, Salem wants to know, are there any struggles that came in your path when you were becoming a scientist? Mm, I think, well, there's will be several, but uh, I, I don't think it's a major reason as long as you really decide what you do. I mean, first it's like, a, of course, your family, you have to convince your family you want to study insects. That's a, that's a, interesting topic and uh, and I think deciding what you want to do and uh, trust it and that will be hard and also I started abroad I came to America to do my PhD so language is another thing oh you know I think as as you decide what you want to do and uh, you have good determination I think you can make it for sure. Awesome. Thank you. All right. We got another question from Milo. Are all mosquitoes equally dangerous? No, no. Like I uh, mentioned before, so not all the mosquito is a blood feeder. So some of them, they don't feed on us. And uh, not all of them will transmit the disease to humans. So majorly, we only study several very important species around the world. For example, it is a juvenile but pitas. I mean, those dangerous thing, danger. Mm -hmm. um, oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. Next question is from Corinne. Um, what do you do when you see mosquito eggs? Like if we're in our backyards, we happen to have like a like a planter with some water in it and we see mosquito eggs, what do we do? <laughs> is, oh, I, uh, for you, if you see that, just dump them. They will die in the dry for a couple hours. I mean, they will die. So as long as they are not in the container, they will be fine. So yeah, remove them. They will not be hard. Even they hard, the larvae cannot survive in the dry condition. So, so dry it out. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. We got a question from Sabir. Uh, how or do mosquitoes ever have a positive impact on Earth or us? <laughs> Yes, they do. Uh, I think they are very important to our ecosystem, to our environment, to all the life around the world. They are important uh, nutrients. For example, they are larvae in the water, the fish eat them. So they are very important. Cool, sounds good. Um, let's see. Um, do mosquitoes get diseases from other insects? That's a question from Muhammad. I don't, as I recall, I don't remember that could happen because first uh, mosquitoes don't feed on other insects, so they don't have a chance to get the disease from other insects. And also, even they do to drink some like a uh, leftover from the other insect, they will not get infected. So. I don't think that's will be possible. Sounds good. Uh, our next question is from Isaac. Uh, what is the coolest, most memorable bug that you've ever encountered? I think it's though, uh, well, I made so many, so it's hard to decide which one, but uh, I would still, I would say uh, there's some, like a, uh, endangered species which 
around the world and uh, I coincidentally met one or two of them in the mountain and you just feel so happy like uh, oh my god that's barely seeing and you find will see it you just happy <laughs> for sure yeah I've been on like a mission to see a Cecropia moth somewhere in Pennsylvania or New Jersey um they're the biggest moth in North America and I cannot find one of those little moths, big moths to save my life. I've been trying over and over again, again since I moved back here and I can't do it. So if I ever see one of those Cecropia moths, I'm going to freak out. They're like bright red and white and brown. They're really cool. Um, so if you live anywhere, I think, I think they're everywhere kind of east of the Mississippi, but I don't know that for sure. But anyway, they live in North America. Um, all right, next question. Uh, what kinds of caterpillars are poisonous and is it common to see a wolf spider? It's a common for what? to see a wolf spider. Oh, uh, caterpillar, well, try not to, well, you will see if they are toxic. So most of them, I mean, most of his mouth, caterpillar, you will see those like spine or like a thing on there. And uh, I believe no one will touch it if you already seen them like uh, uh, warning you, like uh, don't touch me. Uh, some of them should be fine, but uh, anyway, in a while, I don't encourage anyone just touch whatever insect or caterpillar around, only if you really know them. Otherwise, you might get allergy or you don't know what they have. Yeah. And uh, I have no idea about spiders, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Wolf spiders are very common. If you go out at night with a flashlight, what's cool about spiders is that their eyes reflect back like really brightly. So if you are like, you know, you have a headlamp, you have a flashlight, and you're like flashing it in leaf litter anywhere, like in your backyard, walking through your neighborhood, whatever, um, and you see like a little like reflector coming at you, that's probably a spider. And at least... So where I live, I live in Pennsylvania and I spend a lot of time in, in New Jersey. There are wolf spiders all over the place in this part of the country, all the way up to Maine. And I think also down to Florida. So wolf spiders are incredibly common. They're pretty much everywhere, at least around here. Um, and if, if you want to find one, um, go out with a flashlight, look for some eye shine and then follow that eye shine. And if they're crawling around on the ground, it's often a wolf spider. Um, if they're huge and furry and brown, that's a wolf spider. Um, so good luck on your wolf spider mission. Uh, I have faith. And yeah, don't touch spiky caterpillars. It's a dangerous endeavor. Um, the next question is from Corinne. What do you consider to be the most dangerous type of tick? Ticks. <laughs> I would not say uh, the most dangerous one of the color species then. Well, the, 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 the one transmit disease that I mean, majorly they are in the Northeast area, like mm -hmm. Slovenia and New England area. So those are human kind ticks. And uh, in the South, it's majorly like dog ticks, cat ticks or horse ticks. So if I would say the, the, the ticks target on human, not the one, the major vectors. So just be careful after you go out for hiking and come back, check again if you got beaten. Yeah. Um, do you know anything about the Lone Star tick that uh, transmit that disease? And I can't remember what the name of the disease is, but it's the one that makes you allergic to red meat. Lone Star. What is that stuff called? Hold on. Lone Star tick, red meat allergy. It's really strange. Um, yeah. So, alpha gal syndrome. Hmm. Mm -hmm. They cause a little bit of uh, like uh, immunity to the body. How, I mean, it's not Lyme disease, but uh, they still make us a little bit uncomfortable. Yeah, sounds good. The next question is from Alina. What would you consider to be the most shocking information you learned while you were studying insects? Um, that's also depend on the stage, you know, but yeah. shocking thing. I learned so many shocking things when I'm all in all in there. I would say the first ever I saw those like a uh, predator mosquito is uh, mind blowing because I, I don't know if you have chance recently on the Twitter or social media, they have a slow motion of those like a uh, predator lobby. 
Like actually, the head is pumping out. So they have like a very tight, con like a very flexible connection. So they kind of like a, like go out and uh, catch the predator and come back. Sweet. So that's very really my problem. That's, that's pretty shocking for sure. Um, all right, so we try to keep these sessions to be about 45 minutes and we're coming up on that now. So we always ask everybody the same two questions at the end of every session. The first question is if you had everyone's attention in the whole world and you can tell them one thing about your area of expertise, what would that be? Uh, you mean like uh, I just I just say one sentence about what I'm doing or? It could be you could just like something you want people to know. Something you want people to know that is in some way related to your area of expertise. Hmm. Actually, that's I never think about that question. I see so cool. Uh, I would say again that the, the same thing I always tell people like uh, try to take care of your own backyard and uh, let's help each other to remove the disease from the world. Sounds good. All right, next question. You have everyone's attention in the world still. And you can tell them one thing, but it can be about anything. It could be serious and important. It could be silly and insignificant. It could be anything. What do you want everyone in the world to know? Don't, <laughs> don't afraid about insects. They are pretty cute and they will not harm you actually. They normally when they see you, they actually want to escape from you, even the wasp or like a honeybee, if you don't enter the territory, they actually want to escape from you. So I know a lot of people are afraid of all bugs or insects, but uh, if you come down, eh, actually, they are pretty cute. Bugs are cute. That's a great Great, great sentiment to end it on. I agree that bugs are cute. Um, wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing all your knowledge with us. Um, every, is there anything else you want to plug before we wrap up? No, thank you for the invitation. I hope everyone got some information taking home. Great, thanks. All right, everybody, we will see you again November 3rd for a, a session all about um, Earthquakes and volcanoes. We'll be talking to uh, Dr. Bartlow all about that. Uh, so join us for that. We will see you then. Uh, thank you all for coming. Have a good week.